Neera Tandon is uh, it been getting grilled in front of the uh, budget committee. And um, it really, I mean, it really does make you wonder. Like, I understand. I mean, from my perspective, this is complete conjecture on my part. This was Joe Biden saying, thank you, Hillary Clinton. Yes. This is, thank this you, is, Clinton Orbit. Yes. This is, this is, this, and, and, and. And no one's more Clinton than Neera Tandon. Honestly. I mean, I, yeah. I that, that's, I mean, this is my speculation anyways. But, but man, like, talk about, like, doing yourself damage. You know, like, this is embarrassing. It's embarrassing. Like, she does not have any special skills, it seems to me, to uh, warrant OMB or anything for that matter. Like, like there is a there has to be a replacement version of Neera Tandon who doesn't come with all this baggage that she has, Uh, even if like, you know, I mean, from a policy standpoint, the things that she has said and her perspective on this stuff is garbage. You know, whether it's like, let's take their oil uh, in Libya or, um, you know, or, or just feeling comfortable taking the, the money that she did to support these things. You know, the, the Twitter stuff is like, you know, incidental, it seems to me. But 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 it's clear, you know, her hostility, but uh, towards, you know, progressives, et cetera, et cetera. But um, like, like, why would you do like why? Like, you know. The thing that was good about the Obama administration was just like no drama. Like, why would you do this? Like, why yeah. would you open yourself up to this? Well, I it's guess. the same reason that he's, you know, rewarding Merrick Garland with the attorney general pick. It's it, it. Biden is like personal loyalty. It seems like is that's his deal. Um, but it doesn't matter if it comes at the expense of uh, people's uh, fitness for a certain position or other things like that. I mean, um, and, and 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 then like if you were a conspiracy theorist about this thi- about her appointment, wow, the incoming chair of the Senate Budget Committee is Bernie Sanders. He's directly responsible for the hearings. Like it's it's almost too well. It's perfect. not a question of conspiracy theory. I'm sure that I mean, look, they, it's not like they couldn't have contemplated like, oh, this is be good. I mean, this is this is a sop to the Clintons and the Clintons. You know, I mean, I don't think this is people know this is not a conspiracy the, the, or even a theory like. The Clintons hate Bernie Sanders. And this is a, you know, this is like a, you know, it's, it's just petty. It's petty. And, you know, there's been some very good picks that Biden's had, particularly on like the sort of like sub cabinet level uh, in terms of like, you know, getting a lot of applauded progressive. This was not a great one. Here is a, should we play this clip? Yeah. Bernie Sanders uh, basically acknowledging that she um, has been very vitriolic towards progressives i i haven't been able to see for the past four years her tweets because i am blocked sam are you on that list as well i believe i am i i i I wasn't following her so i didn't um she blocked me after i think i called out um let me see the fact that she was a part of hillary clinton's racist campaign against barack obama in 2008 i'm i'm not blocked by her yeah uh anyway here it is (laughs) That's important that we debate the issues and try to minimize the level of personal and vicious attacks that seem to be so prevalent all over this country today. Uh, I have a letter in front of me from, as I'm sure you have seen, a number of Republican members of the House concerned about some of the things you said as uh, the head of CAP. But of course, your attacks were not just made against Republicans. There were vicious attacks made against uh, progressives, uh, people who I have worked with, me personally. So as you um, come before this committee to assume a very important role in the United States government uh, at a time when we need serious work on serious issues and not personal attacks on anybody, whether they're on the left or the right, Can you reflect a little bit about some of your decisions and the personal statements that you have made in recent years? Yes, Senator, I really appreciate that question. And I recognize that my language and my uh, expressions on social media, you know, um, caused hurt to people. And I feel badly about that. And I really regret it. And I recognize this 
It's really important for me to demonstrate that I can work with others, and I look forward to taking that burden. And I apologize to people on either the left or right who are hurt by what I've said. Okay. I'm from, uh, let, let, okay, <laughs> let me just like, I, I just, first off, when you have to appoint somebody who's like going to, to lead any type of organization and it's incumbent upon them to say at their hearing, I need to be able to prove that I can work with others. Like, do seriously? Like, maybe that should be just like, that should be baseline. That's like we, kindergarten baseline. Like, you know what? We, we got 300 million people in the country. Let's just pick somebody who doesn't have to prove that they can work with others, but just already it's everybody knows they can work with others. That's why, that, like, and then we can like move up from there. Well, she had to delete a thousand tweets before these confirmation hearings. She did it last month. A lot of it was attacking Republicans. Fine, go ahead. Why don't you tweet, delete all of them? I mean, I don't understand why. But why even delete them? We can see them still. You're a public figure. You were the head of the, one of the most, you know, established democratic think tanks in Washington, D.C., and you used it in an insane way to take down progressives and attack them. I mean, like an absolutely unhinged way. She was accused of hitting Bernie Sanders' campaign manager from 2020 when he worked there. Yeah. Um, her response is the most Eddie Haskell. I don't know if people under even know what that is anymore. Uh, the most sort of, you know, this is like when I chastise my daughter for something <laughs> and she just immediately turns on like, you're right, Dad. I'm really sorry. I won't do that again next time. And you know what? She does it again. Right. She's just that's just like complete uh, auto mode. But let me also just say this about Sanders. Bernie has an agenda. And, you know, I imagine there's going to be some quarters are like, Bernie's not sticking up for us. He's not like hammering her. He's just going to sign off and rubber stamp it for Joe Biden. Bernie Sanders has an agenda that is actually like legitimately important to people, like a $15 minimum wage. Bernie Sanders has an agenda to um, uh, empower workers and unions to make sure that um, there's expansion of, of programs uh, for real human beings, uh, that people get more health care as much as he can get for people. And he's got to make a decision. Is he going to expend his political capital on crapping on Neera Tandon because she's a horrible person and... You know, like, honestly, like, she is a middling pick for OMB. She is, like, no worse than probably a half a dozen people who are lined up behind her if she gets, uh, was to not get rejected. No, but certainly no better. And he's got to decide, am I going to, am I going to uh, expend my political capital on dealing with Neera Tandon or am I going to expend my political capital on providing material benefits to the extent that I can for people? Which would you prefer? The $15 minimum wage, which I don't know that we're even going to get. Or dunking on her? Or dunking on her. Well, I think some corners of the internet, and I'm, I think we are well aware of who those people would be, would prefer that because that's their politics, right? Bernie Sanders obviously is interested in actual politics and actually improving people's lives materially. So, uh, yeah, no love lost for Neera Tandon. I don't think she's sincere in her apology. I think that she has displayed uh, a, a shocking gall, uh, amount of gall and lack of morality, uh, not just in her tweeting, but in exactly what you said about her, uh, the leaked emails that said she, she wanted to, to, what, carpet bomb Libya, something like that. Or, or... She was like, we should get them, we should, we should pay for our bombing with their oil. Yeah, absolute insane. That's what Donald Trump said. That's what Dick Cheney. That's what yeah. Donald Trump yeah. said about Iraq. And then, and then, of course, you know, uh, all of the money, the disgusting blood drench potentially, or at least uh, oil drench and other um, terrible industries money that she took at CAP. Um, an organization that was ostensibly supposed to, to push forward progressive issues that she made a shell of itself in order for... Um, her to get basically paid and for the organization to raise money and then push those interests forward. 
Um, it's it's actually very sad because that organization could have done a lot of good based on the infrastructure that it had, and it was hollowed out by her and the Clinton orbit that she surrounds herself with. So no love lost for Neera Tandon. But as somebody who's going to direct OMB, she's not Secretary of State. Um, it's not the end of the world. And Sanders, once again, being the bigger person, putting his personal agreement aside in order to advance, advance his policy agenda. That's just, you know, that's who he is. All right, let's turn to um, turn to uh, oh, let's let's play that clip from uh, from from uh, uh, is it is it Kennedy or who is that? Um, uh, what's his face? That one that uh, that one that you sent Emma and the the slide. Let's play this one. Hold on, what? This one, the um, oh, you sent that to me. Oh, wait. Oh wait, no, the, the that that one you sent to the thing. Do I, let's play that, Brendan. Yeah. You know, it's not just one or two. I think you deleted about a thousand tweets. And it wasn't just about Republicans. And I don't mind disagreements in policy. I think that's great. I love the dialectic. But the comments were personal. I mean, you call Senator Sanders everything but an ignorant slut. That is not, that is not true. And Senator. when... <laughs> That's a, an office reference, but um, that's that's uh, Senator Kennedy, wait, right? Wait, that's a what office reference? Ignorance lot. Um, I you know at one point Michael says to Dwight, Dwight, you ignorant slut. Yeah, do you know where that came from? What? Yeah. Oh, God, shit! Damn it! Did I do something embarrassing? That's originally a, what a Blues Brothers or no a SNL Ackroyd, right? Well, it was Ackroyd uh, and uh, Bing Curtin. I, I knew, I've seen that sketch. Yeah, I've seen it. Sorry. It's I, Weekend I, Update. It was every week. Yeah, I've seen it. I've seen it. I'm sorry. I'm that old. Was, that I'm was, old. Um, but that's that's how our generation got from oh the office. Oh, my God. Hey, on the Peacock app, you can watch both all the archive of SNL and The Office. Nice. That was uh, Senator Kennedy but, uh, you shouting know, out Peacock. What's interesting about that is that is um, that that exchange, like, it's not going to, you know, like that lowers the temperature on the conservative side. Yeah. And it's it's really geared towards like trying to agitate uh, the left. But I don't I think that's sort of there. I think that's a I think that's a fool's errand on their part. Yeah. Kennedy but, really cares about Bernie Sanders's feelings. That's right. That's right. <laughs>